Welcome back to BAS 120. Uh, we're going to take a look at the, uh, the capital budgeting example. Uh, it's example 5.37 and 5.38 that we've combined. And we're going to introduce the use of our analytic, analytic solver platform that is an add into Excel, very powerful, that front lines uh, offered to us for this course. So it allows us to run some very uh, Monte Carlo simulations, a lot of simulations which gives us a little more sophistication of the data than normal, I, I think. We'll see, see if you enjoy it. So let's say we have a project and we're trying to estimate uh, the value of the future investments. Let's say we're, we're investing in a new product or investing in a, uh, another plant and we discount all the future value cash flows. That's called the present value uh, in this example. And they tell us, that we think our present value is going to be about $12 million. And they tell us the standard deviation around that's going to be around two and a half million. Now, to get that return, there's an upfront investment of about three million, and that's going to have a standard deviation of around 800,000. And what this allows us to do is, so if we look at the present value investment scenarios, what a lot of folks will do is they'll say the best case is three standard deviation to the right, or maybe they calculated this standard deviation by most likely management saying, our best case is 19.5, our most likely is 12, and worst case, the benefits are only gonna be four and a half million. And then we may have used that information to calculate a standard deviation. But e either way, we're using these assumptions and we can change these assumptions, we're saying, Best case, present value, it's going to range somewhere between four and a half million and 19.5 million. We've done the same thing for our um, investments. We think it's going to cost us three million, but there might be cost overruns. It's probably not real, real realistic that we're going to have huge cost underruns, but that's what we've assumed. And again, the flexibility of this model is you can change your assumptions. Well, now we get down to the what ifs. So what do we do with this? How do we run some of these? Well, notice what I've done here is I've gone up to analytic solver and I went to distributions. And I and you can say, all right, before they run a simulation, the risk solver is going to say to you, what kind of distribution do you want around these numbers? Well, I said, let's just give it a normal distribution. And notice it popped in, the mean is 12 and the standard deviation is 2.5. If I wanted to change those, I could change those, right? So it's gonna run scenarios randomly around this distribution that I told it. I did the same thing for uh, the investment, except I think I gave it a little, uh, just for fun, I gave it a tri triangular distribution. So a triangular distribution, it says what's the high, what's the low, what's the, the middle, and I gave it those, right? Um, now, this profitability index is what they've told me, which is simply my profits divided by my investment, and then I just put a rate of return. If you're, if you're familiar with accounting, rate of return gives me my benefits minus my cost divided by my cost. So this right now looks like a pretty good rate of return, uh, 454%. Down here, what I did here is I said I went up to, because I'm not interested in if I'm going to run lots of scenarios, I'm not interested in any one scenario. I'm interested in the average scenario. So what I did is I went up here and I said, you know what? Give me the mean of whatever comes out of cell 28. And the way we did that is we went up here, we went to our analytic solver and we said, you know what? Give me the mean and then it asked me what cell and I told it what cell. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna run a scenario for me in a minute and it's as many as scenario. It's going to randomly pick scenarios from these parameters that I've given it for present value in these parameters I've given it for investments. It's going to calculate all this and it's going to give me some really, really neat statistics. So now I'm going to go to model and here you can see here's our model. 
Here's our uncertain variables. So our uncertain variables are uh, P28, which is some sort of range on a normal distribution somewhere between 4.5 and 19.5 million investment return. Our other unknown variable is our investment levels, right? Uh, our uncertain function is our profitability because that's dependent upon what our uncertain variables are. And then we're going to do a statistical function that's going to calculate what the average of all our scenarios are. So there's a little summary of what our model is doing. Now, if I go to engine, excuse me, platform, I come down here, it says, how many trials do you run? Well, let's run a thousand trials. I want to simulations. I've got one simulation, one program. I want you to run a thousand trials. And I go to output and I don't have any yet because I haven't hit this key that says solve or run simulation. So now it's going to run the simulation and there in 0.2 seconds it's run the simulation and it's given me this very neat and interesting uh, frequency distribution. So right off the bat I can see most of my data, my most likely or my average is around 4.6 profitability. And there you can see the distribution. And I'm very not very likely to make over 10, not likely at all to lose money. I don't ever, in the whole thousand scenarios, I don't ever lose money. Over here it gives me uh, gives us a whole bunch of the standard devi the mean, the standard deviation, the variance, the min, the max, all sorts of statistics that we may want to have. Gives us a cumulative distribution function, right? Now, this is very interesting. It gives us a reverse cumulative distribution, which is interesting. This is very interesting. This automatically gives us a sensitivity. This says, which varying these cells, how much does it influence? Now, notice if I have a small change in my F24, my investment, it has a potentially big impact on my profitability index. And the changes in my present value have half the impact of the changes in my cost. So it tells us right off the bat from a sensitivity point of view, we want to keep a real close eye on our cost. Uh, different scatter plots, you've got lots of stuff. You can come down here, you can say what are the percentiles. So I immediately know 1% of the time or less, I make 1 million. Here's basically our cumulative frequency distribution in a table format. So if the boss says, well, I'm real, real worried. Uh, uh, what's the worst case? You know, less than 10, less than 10 percent of the time, you'll make two and a half million or less. So a lot of this is um, taking all of this stuff, modeling it, running scenarios, scenario analysis, uh, it gives you the sensitivity around the, the different ones. Um, it's a great tool. Hope it helps. Play around with it. Do the example. Uh, you can change around some of the numbers. See what you get. Any questions, let me know. Powerful analytic tool.